Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show how I made this Astra Militarium and Tyranid diorama which I'm calling the last stand as obviously the Astra Militarium aren't exactly doing a very good job here and well yeah it's their last stand. So I recently did a poll where you guys got to choose what it was that I used to make the diorama with and you guys chose the Astra Militarium so that's what I've used. I've had the Tyranids for about five months now so I was going to use them in some sort of diorama and this one seemed the perfect one to, to do them in. And I certainly had a lot of fun making this build. So as mentioned I've had this box of Tyranids for quite some time and as you can see I've well I've kind of nicked some of the sprues because I cut bits off to use for other builds but the actual figures obviously I haven't cut up. And then I recently brought obviously the Astro Militarium as this is what you guys chose. So for the base I'm going to use a sheet of plywood just because it's nice and strong. And I've also got some more of that packing stuff that came in the 3D printer. So I'm going to be using that again. So I'm going to use one of the little figures just so I can get the sort of scale of this building correct. And you guys also voted whether I should do the diorama in a trench or as a book nook. And book nook kind of just about one, but a lot of people said they'd rather see the trench. So I'm kind of doing a bit of both. So I'm doing a trench, but this thing also fits in as a, a book nook as well. Two for the price of one. So there's a case of basically cutting up some of this, uh, this sort of packing styrofoamy stuff um, just to sort of build up the size of the walls. And then my little guy can just go in the middle of it. And then it's just a case of gluing it all down with a bit of super glue. I did have a go at using my hot glue gun but obviously the hot glue gun kind of like melts stuff because it's hot. And then using the good old grout which I seem to have used in quite a few of my recent builds just because it's such a great stuff to use. I'm going to sort of plaster this onto the top. This will give me a nice sort of rough texture to go with. Obviously my expensive tool isn't quite up for the job. Although now I've got two tools for the price of one. So I'm basically going to put this all over the build. As obviously as well as giving a nice sort of texture to everything. It also seals it all. So I'll be able to paint it later. Without the, uh, the polystyrene stuff melting. There we go. That's all pretty much covered now. So now I can get onto the inside of this trench and obviously I'm going to do some like wooden slats. And to do this I'm just using these coffee stirrers. I think I bought about a pack of a thousand of these for about seven quid. Which is pretty cool. So all the materials I use guys I pretty much buy from Amazon. Apart from the grout which I simply get from Wilco's as it's dirt cheap there. I'm an affiliate with Amazon so if you do click on my link down below guys. Anything you buy I then get a few pence from. It doesn't cost you any more but it helps this channel out. So I printed off some um, some sandbags with my 3D printer. Just as I feel any kind of trench like this would have some sort of sandbags in it. Plus any excuse to use the 3D printer as I absolutely love it. So I'm also going to make a little explosion on this diorama. And I've done that a few times in the past and I've used these little tea lights. And these ones are the flickering ones which just help with the look of the explosion. So to make the explosion in the ground I'm just going to use these bits of wires poking out as I want to cover these with some grout just to make it look like there's some sort of rubble and ground and debris basically being thrown up in the air and these wires just give the grout some support just to hang on to otherwise obviously the grout would just keep, um, keep falling down basically and then yeah good old grout again multitude of uses and it's just a case of keep putting bits on bits on and the good thing with this is the, uh, the messier it is obviously the better it looks And there we go, pretty pleased with that. So while I leave that to fully dry I can get my little figures out. Obviously these ones are pretty simple, there's not a lot of um, assembly required here. Basically they just come in two parts, you have the body and then the, uh, the couple of arms holding the gun. Nice and simple. So we'll get them all glued together. So I'm going to have a couple of the figures dead on the ground. And just to make them obviously lay flatter, I'm just going to basically sand off half the guy's face and part of his body. And that way, there we go, he'll lay nice and flat on the ground as though he's obviously a bit brown bread. Oh well, poor fella. So now onto the Tyranids. And I say I have already opened this box up some time ago because I've had it for quite a while. And so as you can see, I haven't taken the Tyranids off, but I have cut some of the sprues off. As I as mentioned before, I didn't actually use them 
in some sort of sprue build. So it's quite a little production line game of these as they are in a few little parts. So yeah, little production line going and we'll just get all these bits glued together. So the, uh, the grout on the base is all dried now. I've been looking at these wooden slats that I've put in and I'm kind of thinking I put them in the wrong way around. I've had a good look at a few reference photos of World War One trenches and basically the slats were going the other way. So as I don't like this, I am going to change it. And there we go, half hour later, slats are in the right way round. And yeah, I'm more happy with this because it looks a bit more realistic. So if you're not happy with something you're building, you should always stop and change it just so you are happy. So back to all my figures and now the task of obviously painting them all. So this is the first time I'm going to be painting multiple figures. As basically in the past, I've only ever painted one figure at a time. And to be honest, I think this channel, I've only actually painted five figures. So to paint so many, I'm going to make it a bit easier and I'm going to basically stick them onto these little sprues and then treat it like a kind of a production line. So I've primed all the Tyranids in white as basically that's going to be their main sort of colour. And the soldiers I've done in the black and then just from, from the top I've done them in the grey. And then my base, I've just gone for a nice red as obviously that's going to be more brownish colour afterwards. So I'm still loving the contrast colours from Citadel, so that's kind of what I'm going to be using for uh, for the Tyranids. Um, basically there's only going to be a few colours for these guys, obviously the main white colour they're in, red for the claws, and then like a bluish grey I'm going to do for their, their, their backs. And there we go, my little production line's working quite well here. Using the sprues is pretty handy, as it's keeping them all together. So whilst I don't actually hate painting figures, it's still not the most enjoyable bit that I do. I much prefer building and making stuff to actually this sort of painting. But hey ho, it has to be done. So these guys are nearly done now, just the backs to do. And I think doing these as a batch rather than doing obviously singly has certainly made this a lot quicker. As I think if I'd done them individually, I would have got to about the third or fourth one and thought, ah, uh, there's only going to be a few of these in the diorama. And then on to these guys, kind of doing the same sort of thing, got the four of them on a sprue here. So again, these guys aren't going to be too bad to paint, as there's only a few colours on these ones as well. So I managed to get all the figures done in an afternoon, which is pretty cool. And then we can get back onto the base, which is much more fun for me, especially as I get to use a larger brush just to slap on the paint. So I really am pleased that I took the extra time to change these slats around in this trench as I really wasn't happy with the ones before and I really do like how they look now. So again, it's just basically getting all the base colours on this build which again, there's, there's not a lot of different colours to be used. And then I can go over the whole thing with some washes. So I love trying out new things. So I've got this grass flocker. As basically, I want to do some more sort of terrain sort of builds. And basically, well, use more grass in the builds. So I've seen other people use these. They look pretty simple, really. All you need to do is get down on sort of like a, a layer of the old PVA glue. Get that everywhere where you want, obviously, the grass to, uh, to be. And then you've got the little red button on the side of this thing, which obviously turns it on and off. And it's just a case of making sure one end's connected to the item that you're, well, putting the grass on. And then just shake the thing and push the red button. So I'm really pleased with how simple this is and how, well, how effective it looks. So yeah, I'm definitely going to be making more dioramas or more terrain sort of builds um, using grass, basically. Should be pretty cool. And then I can just repeat this step for, well, for the rest of the areas where I want grass, basically. Nice and simple. So now I'm going to make some barbed wire. And I'm going to simply do this by getting, obviously, some nice thin wire. And I'm going to twist it round on itself. 
So the easiest way of doing that is obviously using a little, uh, I'm using a cordless drill and a pencil. And then we just slowly turn the drill on and we twist and twist and twist. And there we go, that looks pretty cool. Obviously we'll add the other uh, barb bits in a minute. Uh, but obviously I need to wrap around a pen first, just to give it that, uh, well, that round shape that it kind of has. So there you go, that's nice and simple. So to make the, uh, the sharp barbie bits, I've got some even thinner wire now. And what I'm going to do with this is basically just sort of wrap it round each one of these little curved bits. Um, and then obviously wrap it round itself, put it through, so it goes to the next one. And then again, wrap that round that part of the um, the wire, and keep doing that all the way along. It's a little bit fiddly this job, but it's certainly uh, certainly worth it once it's done. And then once that's all done, it's then just a case of trimming away bits of the metal that are in between. So the idea is you just leave a little bit on either side of the main bit of the wire. Again, a little bit fiddly, but definitely gives a good result in the end. Because I've also put a bit of glue on each one of these as well, just to make sure it doesn't sort of spin off or come undone. And then using my little pliers, I can just manipulate the bits of wire into whatever position I want, really. And there we go. Pretty effective. And I've also cut some sprues up to make the end pieces. And yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how these have come out. It's the first time I've made sort of barbed wire. And I think these are pretty good ones they painted. So back to my little tea light, which I'm going to use for the uh, the explosion. Um, and basically, if you've seen the other videos I've made of this, it just makes it you need like a kind of a framework going up and around it. Um, and again, using some thin wire, this, this is easy to do. Um, a few bits go up and around, and then the piece goes all the way around. And then where it all sort of touches and connects, um, a little bit of glue, just to keep it all in place. And the reason to have the framework, obviously, is so I can attach bits of cotton wool to it. And obviously the cotton wool is what's going to be the, uh, the main look of the explosion. So it's just a case of gluing the cotton wool all over this piece, just so there's nothing left and you can't see any of the wires. And once it's all covered, it looks like a kind of a marshmallow. So now we can have a go at spraying it. And again, I'm using my little spray gun that I tried to use last time. And this time I thinned it out just to the right amount and it works wonderfully. So I generally like to use a bit of yellow um, and then I use a little bit of red over the top of that and then finally I use a bit of black. Okay so now everything's pretty much painted, now the fun part I can get to attach everything uh, simply by putting it in where I think it looks best and then gluing it down. So using the super glue to stick things down basically means most things should just pop off. Um, but if they don't, they're easy enough just to cut off. So I'm going to place a lot of the figures on this first, um, just to see where they look good. And then once I'm happy with their position, then I'll glue them in, just as I won't be playing with this. So I kind of want the things to be stuck in place, just so they never move, basically. So this build, along with some of my other builds, will be up for sale soon. Um, I'm not too sure where I'm going to be selling them. I might make my own website up, I'm not too sure. Uh, but yeah, keep a look out for that, guys. If you are interested in buying any of the things that I build, um, yeah, I will be selling them soon. So let me know in the comments, guys, what build you'd like me to do next. As well as obviously doing all the uh, the sprue builds and the orc builds, I do like trying out new things as well. So let me know what you'd like me to do. Okay, so once everything's been stuck into place, this is how it looks. Hope you enjoy it, guys. Here they come!
enjoyed the build guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share where possible as that really does help the channel out so much. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell as I do produce videos every week. A big thanks as always to all my patrons who help support this channel. You can become a patron for as little as 25p a week as this will help me do this full time. There are a couple more videos on the screen guys, give those a click, see more of what I do. Okay guys, that's it. Bye for now.